This week we're in Leicestershire, where Debbie and Brian are putting the final touches to their dream plot. The transformation of Debbie and Brian's picturesque cottage is almost complete. But before we do the finishing touches, there's one further area I'd really like to tackle. It won't take a lot of time or effort, but with a bit of thought, we can really enhance this frontage. As well as marking out the territory of the cottage with a fence stretching across the entire frontage, I also wanted to distract the neighbour's view of Brian and Debbie's goldfish bowl of a conservatory by hanging beams in front of it. The normal and the simplest way to fix overhead beams into a wall would just be to chase them actually into the brickwork. But the problem here is that we don't actually own this wall, or Debbie and Brian don't own it. So what we've had to do is fix them totally independently. We fixed two vertical posts into the ground using a normal concrete foundation and slung a beam between the two of them. Then using the joist hangers, we've actually hung these overhead beams from them. With the beams up and the fence post setting, it was time to construct our cottage style picket fence, the ultimate see-through boundary. I've designed it so the pickets are 98 centimetres long. So hopefully we can get 98, maybe three, three times out of this bit of wood, do you reckon? You can't be higher than a metre for a front boundary fence. Oh, right. And so we want it just a little bit lower so we've got a clearance over the ground. Rather than a straightforward pointed top, I chose a spade design to add an individual touch to the fence. A bit more effort to jigsaw at, but well worth it. I spaced the uprights out to every other one, making the fence look more traditional and in keeping with the cottage. But instead of painting it old-fashioned white, I decided to run with the lilac to tie it in with the rest of the house colour. The problem here is if we'd had a normal gate to come right out to this opening and swing back, your car would have been had to concertina to quite a small space. So at least by having these bifold gates, they're really clever because it just means you've got room for the car to slot in very neatly behind it in a confined space. Right. Just get the top one in loosely in. Just line it up still, mate. Okay, but let's pop them in at the level. Isn't that nice? Yeah, it's yeah. good. Just that makes your whole plot yeah. look twice the size, doesn't it? Definitely. Because when I first came, I thought, that's their house, and what's this bit of land here? Yeah. Yeah. I thought it belonged it to them. It off, yeah, it? yeah. It looks great, isn't it? It's very, great. Guys, very easy. Good job. We've solved a lot of privacy problems, but if Debbie and Brian want to feel totally at ease in their conservatory, then we do need a couple more distractions to avoid prying eyes. Two trellis panels would provide the perfect solution without going overboard on intrusive solid screening. We simply attach them to posts concreted in the ground and added some finishing touches with wooden finials and a small band of woven willow round the top. With all the structures up, it was time to give the beams a lick of colour to coordinate them with the windows. We used an opaque wood stain as opposed to paint for easier application and to help protect the wood. Finally, to cap the whole area off, it was time to pop in some border plants along the front and to create a bit of a jungle on the conservatory side. It's 
ease it down there. It's a real luxury to have such a massive pot to plant in. Yes. And when you come to watering it, it's going to be so easy because you're not going to have to be out there with a the hose every day. Most important with terracotta is to get the drainage. Um, because if water sits in the bottom of this pot and you have a hard frost, it freezes, expands and bursts the pot, which is the last thing we want. So then we want some compost. Just enough so it's about the base level of the plant. And it's nice to have moistish compost because compost is very difficult to wet once it gets dry. So one wonderful golden bamboo, Philistachis aura. How does that fit? Not bad, that's fine, isn't it? These bamboos are amazing. As the canes mature, they become this lovely golden color. When they're young, they start off greener, but then they will color up as they get older. Right. And they will grow to 10 meters, imagine that, 30 foot. Already it's pretty huge. So it's still a baby then, isn't it? But then... <laughs> yes. I think in England, to be honest, I think you wouldn't probably get it going up to that height here. And it will spread, of course. It will slowly spread out and fill the whole width of the pot. And then when it does that, you can just split it, and divide okay. it up and form yeah. new plants. I think we've done a pretty good job of transforming this front area without doing any main structural work, but just using some clever design tricks. Originally, we were never meant to tackle this frontage, but I just couldn't resist it because I knew we'd get a really big hit for little effort. 